Damp, cold air curls around Strahinja's limbs and up his back like an icy finger as he trudges through the haunting Zadarshi forest. It's bitterly cold and dark as he treks onward, wiping beads of sweat from his brow. Only the price of Radoika's hand in marriage compels him forward and fortifies his courage in the blackness of the night. Strahinja focuses on Radoika's radiant beauty as he grips his weapon and his lantern tighter, trudging on. In time, the forest clears, the river streams and old mill now appear from behind the dark trees. Strahinja's feet creak along the wooden floorboards of the mill. He takes a seated position against the back wall, his finger trigger ready, beads of sickly sweat still seeping down his back. He shivers as a deep, dark thunder ripples through his muscles and rattles his heart at the thought of what he must face. Suddenly, Strahinja feels a slashing, agonizing cuts ripping through his skin. The creature has arrived. Radoika wakes in a sweat her long black hair sticky, clinging to her neck and down her back. The salty beads prick her forehead, and yet, strangely, she realizes she feels cold. Not just cold to the touch or the deceptive heat of fever, but something deeper, something darker. A deep cold that could only come from a total absence of light. Radoike shudders quietly as she carefully peels back the bed covers and lets her feet pad to the floor. Careful not to wake the sleeping groom beside her, she wraps her arms around herself for warmth and moves to the armchair by the rain-covered window, curling her legs beneath her. The clear evening sky they enjoyed at their wedding last night is now all but lost as dense rain clouds streak across the dark evening sky. Radoika doesn't know what time it is, but she has that witching hour feeling deep in her stomach as she watches the rain batter down in heavy torrents. Strahinja grants in his sleep and she sees his sinewy shadow roll over in their marriage bed. He's naked, his clothes a dark mound on the floor beside him. Even in the darkness, Radoika can still make out the grimy black soil stains on his clothing, the smear of crimson blood on a cuff. As she looks at her sleeping husband now, her heart swells with pride. But of course, originally, she had begged him not to go. The mill was a dangerous place for any man who dared to cross its threshold after nightfall. But hunting its cursed inhabitant to their temporary resting place? That was an even more unimaginable and deadly undertaking. Strahinja assured Radoika that the natural sunlight early in the morning would help protect them. He said their expedition was a precaution. The creature was most certainly dead after his pistol ripped merciless holes through the creature's chest last night at the mill. Of course, what Strahinja didn't tell Radoika was how that ice-cold blade of terror sliced through his heart as the creature appeared before him. That he only barely slept each night prior, terror keeping his mind racing, and a pistol by his bed. But as he made the journey back towards the village that morning in the crisp morning air, Strahinja had realized just how childish his fear had been. For how easy it was to lodge that bullet deep into the creature's chest and find himself alone in the mill, still intact. When Strahinja returned from the mill that morning with the news, the villagers were overjoyed. They lived in fear of the haunted mill, and the thought of grinding grain out of the main heat of the day without risking a deathly encounter lifted their spirits in ways they hadn't felt for decades. But as people came together to celebrate, one villager remained dubious of Strahinja's success, Miriana 
An elderly widow said she knew Sava Savanovich, the man before the creature. She told of how, even in human form, Sava Savanovich was an evil madman with a fixation on terror. Mediana warned Strahinja, Sava Savanovich will come for you and for those you love. Rattled but unable to lose face, Strahinja gathered ten men from the village. He told Miriana he wasn't afraid of defeating the creature, and that he and his men would take half-thorn wood to the graveyard, dig up Sava Savanovich's remains, and hammer a stake through the unsuspecting creature's heart. In truth, it wasn't clear to him whether his bullet connected with Sava Savanovich that fateful night or not because when the smoke cleared, the creature was gone. He reassured the villagers and his bride regardless. The stake, he said, was just a precaution to calm an old woman's nerves. When the men reached the grave, they were surprised to find the black soil loose and wet. A murmur of fear rumbled through them, but as none were eager to look cowardly, the men began to shovel. As the dirt gave way beneath them, the men heard the clatter of their shovels hit a casket below. They dug a large cavern around the coffin with ample room for standing. Strahinja bravely stepped down into the newly dug hole and cautiously lifted the casket lid. There, lying within the folds of his death shroud, was Sava Savanovich. The creature, blood bloated, seemed almost peacefully sleeping with an unmistakable gunshot wound to his chest. Strahinja grasped the half-thorn stake, its hard texture strengthening his resolve. He hammered the stake deep into the creature's heart. Suddenly, Sava Savanovich cried out. A horrific and blood scream erupting from his thin lips, exposing his razor-sharp fangs still crusted with fresh villagers' blood. As a creature struggled in his coffin, gasping, pinned down by the thick stake, Strahinja reached into the coffin and pulled the death shroud loose. As he did, a single yellow butterfly slipped out from the creature's mouth, and one final breath rasped through him. Sava Savanovich was finally dead. Dirty and bloodied, the men pulled Strahinja from the dirt cavern, heaving him back onto the cool morning ground. Together, they reburied the creature beneath his black soil grave, and as they marched their way back to the village, the men chanted gleefully, He's dead! He's dead! The creature is dead! And at the helm stood Strahinja, now victorious and poised to claim his bride. With both arms raised above his head, he held a long metal pole, and at the end of it glowed the burning death shroud, smoldering to ashes that caught the morning breeze and incinerated behind him. Radojka pulls her gown tighter around her, sharply inhaling the dark as she remembers the long day. She's still feeling strange, but the rain's now gentle patter soothes her. She opens the window and takes a deep gulp from the damp evening air. When she opens her eyes, she's surprised to see a single yellow butterfly flutter in and gently land on the back of her hand. Radojka raises the butterfly up as if to make eye contact with the small creature. Curiously, it hovers up before her and gently floats in front of her eyes. The butterfly is mesmerizing and beautiful, and Radojka is immediately transfixed by its delicate flight. Suddenly, the butterfly swoops down and lands on her lips, and before she can reach out to gently touch it, it disappears deep into her mouth and down her throat. Spluttering, Radojka starts to writhe, and heat rises in her throat. 
her body contorting in the moonlight. Warmth quickly licks its way up her legs and her torso, wrapping itself around her arms, exploding into her throat and face. She is lost in the feeling of her body changing, and as her body convulses, she knows with certainty that this warmth is a cure for her darkness, her fever. Whatever she is becoming now is what she is meant to be. Suddenly, her neck crunches as her body throws her head back and she feels cool, sharp fangs begin to penetrate her gums. And then, it's still and silent once again. Radojka slowly lowers her head. And as she does, she hears her husband grumble in his sleep. She can hear his blood pulsing through his veins, and instantly she realizes it. She realizes she has never been this hungry before. She realizes she can smell Strahinja's blood even from across the room. She realizes she won't be satisfied until she tastes its candied sourness thick between her teeth. Radojka lounges toward the bed, her body burning with the power in this new red-hot darkness. She's on top of Stahinja before he's fully conscious, clawing at his neck with her delicate hands. She thrusts her fangs deep into the caves of his neck, ripping flesh and suckling at his blood. Strahinja bellows, his voice tearing with pain as he grabs for her. Radojka is still tearing and sucking at his flesh with her hungry mouth. Radojka! Radojka! Stahinja's cries are loud and frenzied, but the house stays quiet to his screams. She's too strong for him, and as she overpowers him and drains his blood, she watches her husband's life fade away. His breathing lungs quietly, and blood gurgles at his mouth. He takes his last breath. Then, all is quiet. Radojka slowly moistens her lips, licking at the blood on her mouth and lavishing her newfound feeling of home. Delicately, she rises from her marriage bed and wraps her gown tightly back around her, before moving back toward the rain-splattered window to again drink in some of the night's cool air. As she does, a single yellow butterfly flutters through the open crack and gently lands before her. She watches rapt as a butterfly erupts, ashen yet magnificent. And when the cinder clears, out steps a blood bloated creature with a bullet wound to the chest. Radojka rises to greet the creature, and as she does, her thick black hair cascades down her back. Her eyes shine cold and beautiful, enhanced by the moonlight. Hello, master, she utters. Welcome home. From the Ghost Next Door podcast. Should we take that again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sally Chachich and Sarah Matson from the Ghost Next Door. You just heard the story of Serbian vampire Sava Savinovic, who's one of the most famous vampires in Balkan and Serbian folklore. His claim to fame is that he's one of the oldest, with his legend dating back to the 14th century. With us today is Tatjana Anic from Explore Serbia Tours. She is the operations manager, tour planner and guide whose job is to lead hiking groups to the very home of Sava Savinovic. Tatiana, thank you for joining us today. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> yeah, we organize the hiking tours there every spring. Uh, that is a beautiful mountain region, mountain Pov- Povlen in Western Serbia. And Zarozhia is one small village in Western Serbia. And no one uh, know, knows about this village. They know know about uh, Sava Savanovic and because of that, they know for Zarozhia. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's really, really, 
small village with uh, around uh, 600 uh, inhabitants. And uh, that uh, mill, uh, wooden mill, it's at the river Rogacica. So uh, there was firstly old mill of Sava Savanovic, and then it was reconstructed a few years ago. One local guy, guy uh, actually reconstructed, he has idea that to become tourist place uh, where people will come to and visit Sava Savanovic. He put some vampire motives inside, mm -hmm. <laughs> but actually... There is just now just a meal and nice place uh, to, to sit and uh, see surroundings. Oh, so, so you can actually go inside the mill? Yeah, yeah, you can go inside the mill. You can see that some vampire motifs, take photo, hmm. walk around. And actually it is interesting because it's uh, below one uh, big uh, rock and that rock has uh, three horns. Mm. Oh. And actually a rogue in Serbian means horn, and zarožje, that means behind horns. Oh, um, okay. So it, can, it can be really scary when you go there during night, but when you're during the day, day it's nice. <laughs> nice place. The question we are all dying to hear is, how scared are you when you lead groups to this meal? Well, now I'm not scared at all. <laughs> I, was scared. <laughs> I was scared when when I was young, and when I watched uh, the first Serbian horror movie, mm. which actually uh, made uh, according to uh, short uh, novel uh, from our writer Milan Glišić, who wrote uh, this short story at the end of 19th century. And actually, when I watched that movie when I was young, I was scared completely. You know, a lot of people when they think about vampires, they think about about Romania. Mm -hmm. What would you mm -hmm. say about that, being from Serbia and this place? Uh, the word is from Serbian language, so actually from this Balkan Balkan region. But uh, yes. Dracula, everything uh, moved to Romania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that the legend of Sava Savanovic is a common believed folklore in this area, or is it more a tale told to attract tourists? Actually, it's, it's common uh, belief, and they are really, really scared of, of these stories. We'd heard a rumor that people didn't go there at night. Is that true? Yeah, actually, that is true. And some, some people who live there, they don't believe in this legend about vampire. And when you ask someone, no one will go there during night. Mm. Does the region have any traditions that people still do to protect themselves from vampires? Well, they don't protect themselves, but uh, they have some thoughts about that. Actually, it's not only uh, vampires. We have also some other names which cannot be translated in, in English, like, like uh, Karakondrola or Drekavac. And it's like a uh, demon being uh, one is male, one is a lady with the face of old lady. There are some legends about they don't have a peace during their life and during the night they come out from their grave and then they do some bad things to people who hurt them. <laughs> so we had heard some fascinating rumors that in Serbia at one time people would actually exhume their loved ones and stake them to make sure that they didn't come back as vampires. Is that is that legend or do you think that really happened? That is something what is happened. So is, is that vampire or some kind of uh, people who are maybe strange uh, or people are divided about those beings, yes. and creatures. Have you had any personal experiences with the supernatural or do you believe in vampires, Tatiana? Well, uh, I, I actually, I don't believe in, uh, in the way how it, it is described, but I believe that there are some, some people Mm. who have some power and uh, maybe I don't come by night. I'm not yeah. sure that this vampire like it's described. Right, mm -hmm. But yes. there, there is actually one uh, also interesting story about this place. I mentioned this uh, Zarožian place where is uh, Sava Savanovic. Actually, uh, that was recently, maybe five years ago. During uh, February, it was really snowy weather. And one uh, man... He was actually a policeman. He he, he was there with his car and he had a heart attack. Oh. And, uh, they found he, him in his car in the morning next day. So oh. he was alone and he was 100 meters from water mill. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that's fascinating. So he broke the rule and went at night time and paid the ultimate price. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like... Uh, 
accidentally, but uh, <laughs> some people believe that there is because of Sava Savanovic milk. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sure sure. That, but it's, it's strange for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Sava Savanovic is still there? Uh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> no. If you asked me that uh, 30 years ago, I would tell that he exists there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one thing that was fascinating with his story of Sava Savanovich was the butterflies. So that the butterflies, instead of people being transformed to vampires by being bitten by mm-hmm. vampires, in, in this story they are transformed through butterflies. Could you share a bit more about it? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, from from this uh, story about Sava Savanovich, uh, when they put in his uh, body horn-torn uh, steak. Legend says that uh, a butterfly expa- escaped from his uh, grave. So that means that uh, Sava is still alive and visiting his meal. Oh, well, thank you so much, Tatiana, for joining us. We learned okay. so much and we're so thankful that you were able to come on to the show and chat with us about Sava Savanovich. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to The Ghost Next Door, our brand new horror podcast. This was episode one of season one, The Serbian Vampire, performed by Sarah Matson. This story is a creative reimagining inspired by the Serbian folklore of Sava Savanovic, written by Sally Tajic. This episode features an interview with Explore Serbia tour guide Tatiana Anic. We have five episodes planned for you this season, being released on the last Thursday of every month from November to March. You can listen to us on all of your favorite podcast platforms and follow us on social media at Ghost Next Door Podcast. Have a spooky day. <laughs> <laughs>